thank you for watching the Animal One Guys YouTube channel. If you like this video, please leave a like and leave me a comment. And if you like a lot of my content, please subscribe and hit the bell icon if you want to get notified every time I post a new video. Thanks, guys. Okay, everybody. Today is day two of the neglected and dying bearded dragon rescue, and we are starting my day outside. Why? Well, in today's video, we're going to go over the accessories that came with the tank, the substrate that was used in the tank, and we are going to hand syringe feed uh, our bearded dragon here. So, first of all, thank you to everyone who's already joined up on my Patreon. I can't tell you how much I appreciate that uh, and helping the effort of res rescuing reptiles and taking care of them. Uh, if you are on the Patreon, you can see, like I've been over before, there's, you know, there are benefits, more benefits will be coming, but also you get to know what videos are coming out before they actually come out and things like that. So let's move right into this video. Um, the first thing I want to talk about and why we're outside is the substrate, because then we can go inside. This is the substrate that he was on. Now, bearded dragons can go on substrate. They, it was a long time believed that they couldn't or they wouldn't do well and you could just keep them in, you know, you had to keep them on tile or newspaper or paper towel. And no, that's not true. Now, the fear was for the male bearded dragons, substrate could clog their pores. And sure, that can happen. Or the, the, the bearded dragon itself can, you know, eat the substrate, which will cause impaction and whatnot. Um, you have to use the right substrate. And this really fine sand is the wrong substrate. And I'm going to tell you why. So like a cocoa fiber, which like Eco Earth or something like that, those are some of the best substrates you can use because they are thicker they're less powdery they're less dusty the you know less chance of eating it and causing impaction but something like this which is so fine leaves i mean i don't hopefully you can see it which is why i'm outside like think about the dragon running around in this because my, my bearded dragons run around in their tank all the time if you've got a bearded dragon they run around and when you put a bearded dragon on substrate a lot of times they like to dig as well but this just Look at all the, the dust and all the powder going up in the air. And that's going in their lungs and they're breathing it in. I mean, there's so much residual residue off of this that this is not a good substrate. It's much too fine. Uh, it leaves too much, too much, too much dust around, uh, which can be really bad for them. So this could be a reason. Maybe the, that bearded dragon was eating substrate and was getting impacted, was breathing it in. Um, was clogging pores, you know, get, getting in their vent is another thing that could have been happening. I mean, this, this poor dude's got a really sensitive vent and it's really dirty. So, you know, this, this could have been a cause of it. So right away, we're not at a good start. This is more, this is like aquarium powder sand. I, I don't know. It's garbage. This is garbage. Let's move on. Okay, so when we look at everything that was surrendered with the dragon, it starts to tell a tale of what's going on here. So the first thing I'm going to look at is the food. Now, food that was surrendered or supplements. So we did have flukers, reptile calcium. Hey, this is great. Um, you know, it shows that they were using calcium. It's opened. Yeah, it's got a little bit of dust and dirt on it, but that could have just been stored near the tank. This is good. Buffet blend, the uh, adult bearded dragon food. This is this is good stuff. This is not good to just be used in nothing else. But if you're, uh, you know, just varying up the diet, this is good stuff to put in there every once in a while. Really good healthy treats too. This is really good for blue tongue skinks. And then we've got some mealworms here. Ooh, we got some big boys here. Um, so I talked to them about this. So he said the main diet, he would try kale and, and this and collard greens and lettuce, and romaine lettuce. And then, you know, 
one or two mealworms he would try to get him to eat. So the owners here, you know, they tried a lot. And this is what can happen, is they try, they try, they over try, they burn themselves out, and that's it. So in terms of what's going on in the tank, you guys have seen the tank. It's not a big tank. I think it's got just enough stuff in it what's there. But we have this big log. And, you know, you want to do enrichment, guys, but you also don't want to do too much. Too, too much is bad because then you don't have space. The bearded dragon might just want to mellow out. Maybe the bearded dragon doesn't want to climb on this. This is maybe more just for a visual. Maybe small bearded dragons would like this. But in a small tank, this takes up room. If you're going to use wood like this, you got to be careful for this type of stuff. Look at this. Boom. Get in there. The, the animal gets a nice splinter that goes into its head. Uh, if you've got a snake that's shedding and rubbing, and I mean, these are really sharp. I would, if, if I'm going to reuse this log, which I will use this log in another enclosure, here's another br break right here, is I will sand these pieces down. I'll just grind them way down so it's nice and flush, but too much is not good. Okay. What do we have here? Not great. Heat rock. Um, definitely was used at some point because it's got the sand particles all over it. You know, heat rocks, they get a really bad rap because they're supposed to be self-regulated, but if they overheat, your animal's going to be laying on this. This leads to a lot of burns. Uh, if they didn't, and these were really safe and reliable and better thermostats, these would be awesome for basking spots. Think about it. It would be so easy, no overhead, but unfortunately, they're just not safe. Uh, and because of that, you just don't do it. I mean, look here. Here's some sections where some cord was melted. Look at that. So this was definitely in use. This is weird. I was trying to figure this out for a long time. This thing. And then I figured out that it's a water bowl, but which is kind of cool for a smaller reptile. It's got like steps and everything, but it was it supposed to have a base? I don't know. Like, was this supposed to be sitting in something? Because think about an adult bearded dragon comes put two feet up to drink from this. I mean, I'm barely, I'm barely touching this at all. Water would go everywhere. So this might be something I can use in an enclosure where I bury this into the substrate. And uh, But for a bearded dragon, no. Bad. Then it gets weird. Then I, then I pulled this out. And I, I know what this is. This is a, a, a filter. for. They say it's like a, a turtle filter. Um, and I have a few of these. And there's a lid that goes on it. And the... The filter goes inside of it, and the power cord comes out the back, and the water comes down like a waterfall, and it gets sucked in through two small holes here. But what is this doing with a bearded dragon? I mean, I guess this could have been in the enclosure, again, just as decoration, but not for a bearded dragon. No. Now, let's get to the lighting, shall we? Because this is, this is, this is, you know, when you find a dragon that has M MBD and you want to find out why, it always comes down to the lighting, guys. Always, always, always. So, I got this thing. Not really sure what it is. I see all these LED lights. And I got this for like DC. Let <laughs> me get that out of here. Um... We got some Reptile Sun, uh, some compact, uh, some mini compact fluorescents, 13 waters. Um, these are not necessarily bad as long as you know they're close enough. They don't, they're not powerful at all. They're not powerful at all. So uh, the normal compact fluorescents are much better, much better. But okay, it's interesting that there's two. I mean, they look like they're new in there. They're not used so. New mini fluorescent compact size. Okay, thanks. This dome with a halogen in there. So this is probably what was heating the basking spot. 
It's, uh, it's a good dome. This is a good dome with a good halogen. This will put down some... That will put down some major heat. Uh, no UV, obviously. And then we have this. This double mini dome. So again, there was a screen top that goes went on top of that tank, guys. And this double mini dome has an outdoor, probably halogen, flood lamp, and a normal compact fluorescent. These are great bulbs. If you want heat and something that's long lasting, you don't need to buy a special reptile bulb. These outdoor halogen lights that pump down heat in a good dome, so good. They're outdoor rated so they can get humidity and stuff like this, pump down a lot of heat. Uh, they work good. They work real good. Again, I would say, why aren't you doing a mercury vapor bulb, which is what I'm doing right now, but... Um, if you need UV and you need heat that the mercury vapor bulb can do, great. If for some reason it can't, then you can do this. But Bearded Dragon's basking spot is in the high 80s to low 90s. So a, a mercury vapor bulb, even a 100 watt mercury vapor bulb can do it. But if you need to go up to a 160 watt bulb, you can do it. This is what I'm most interested though. And, and you can tell this thing was used, guys, and... I mean, just look at that dust. This is not dust dust. This is dust from just the normal, you know, everything going on on the uh, on the ground there. So I want to test this bulb. Okay. So the bulb is plugged in. So first thing, let's make sure that it actually turns on. And would you look at that. Would you look at that? Incredible. Incredible. Look at this. See this? This is a bad bulb. Now, again, the person who surrendered this said that, hey, you know, I got a new bulb. Everything is good. Well, does this look new? Does that look new to anyone? This is supposed to be white. See the color change? This just fades. But look at this. And these have mercury in them. What if the powder in here came out and the bearded dragon was breathing this in? Ah. Oh. I don't know. I don't get it. Okay, guys, I'm going to end uh, episode two here, actually, because I see we're already pushing 13 minutes. And we've gone over all the accessories that came with it, minus that rock and that uh, hide a log. So there's our good buddy. He survived the night. He slept the night underneath the hide a log here. Uh, the basking spot's all good. Gets to about 90 degrees on the stone and high high 80s right around it on the newspaper. Um, so in the next episode, you're going to see syringe feeding and we're going to try to tackle. We got to get that massive amount of stuck shed. That probably hurts so bad because I see the skin pinched on it off of his back. All right, everyone. Take care.